All right, everybody, welcome back. It is your pal Al picking up where we left off, playing some alone in the dark. This is probably going to be video number 10 for me in this series. Um, we are just starting chapter four. We just completed the Nile River section with the Dark Man's Temple, and uh, we woke up here. So this is the start of chapter four. Love you guys. Let's get this. Yeah, that's the attic door we've been trying to get into forever, but never could. And of course, of course, of course, now look, we are in a storm. Man. What kind of shape are we in here? Top off my health, but I'm gonna wait a little bit. I'm a little banged up. I'm a little banged up, but nothing crazy. Combe never thought he'd be so happy to be back at the settle. It felt like he had crawled through a long, dark tunnel of misery and regret. Now that he was back, Combe could look into the steps mentioned in the contract. But there was one thing that gnawed on him. What exactly did this have to do with Dr. Gray? Okay, so like I said, this is the beginning of chapter four. We're still trying to break the Dark Man's contract. Now that we're back at the mansion, uh, we need to try to break into Dr. Gray's office. So we're up here. Well, so we need to break into Dr. Gray's office. Dr. Gray's office is down here in the right hand corner by the clerk's office. Hmm. Can I get through here? No, I can't. Interesting. I don't think I have a key for this yet. I need the key. No. <sighs> Got to be around here somewhere. He wouldn't leave this house. I don't know what to think anymore. You running into that dick, fella? Who is he? Can he be trusted? I think he's one of the good guys. Well, you know. Not good. Will he be all right with her coming? Praise the mother. He don't need to know about all that. Just calm down. It ain't time yet. God, it hurts. As far as I can tell, the tech to calm seems to be solving problems, not causing Just be ready in case he starts anything. That's not good. The two or Okay. So that's now unlocked. Oh, we need to open that door. From wait, no, we already Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Why, oh why? Is all this stuff locked up? Oh my god. This stuff's getting aggressive. I need a gardener more than anything, I think, at this point. Christ, what 
What the hell was that? Oh my god. I don't know what the hell that was. So I'm going to go up the stairs, try to... Why are all these random doors now locked? So I need to go into Dr. Gray's office, right? His apartment. Um... Here we go. I don't want to run into the orderlies right now. Not sure I can trust them. Well, this is still locked, I'm pretty sure, right? Do not disturb. All right. Forbidden knowledge. Here we go. I think Dr. Gray might be in there. Perfect time to snoop around his office. Then. Right, 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 right. Don't, I don't want to go that way. I want to take her. Hmm. It's blocked. What? What do you mean it's blocked? Well, if it's blocked, the only other way through, I think. It's blocked. They want me to, do they want me to go back up the stairs? Oh, I can't go back. I can't go out that way. Um. Uh, I don't need to go into the library. And going up there is not gonna do me good. So I gotta go into the basement. Is that what you're trying to get me to do? Oh God. What? Okay. Well, we've already been through here. Preparation for St. John's. We must have faith that Jeremy's pact with the Dark Man is a bluff. If we are lucky, our visitors will find him and prove it's all nonsense before night falls. What is true is our attempt to call on her. Too many things have happened for this evening to be in vain. Think of Jack and Cassandra, even Perosi, whose circumstances I can't understand. Grace is a goat without horns. She knows it and will play the role. You must talk to your brother, Batiste. I worry that he will fail us. Mrs. Thompson. Hmm... It's getting weird. Okay. That one's... I, this is quite literally the only place that I can go now. Oh, they were leading me here, apparently. Lunacy in the Astarte Artist Colony. A monograph by Yael Klein. In early 1909... The old Derseto plantation outside of New Orleans was turned into an artist's colony. Three famous European artists rented the house and the surrounding land from the owner, the Ledoux family. The colony was chiefly run by Sebastian Cortez, who was playfully dubbed the captain by his collaborators, William Argus and Heinrich Kassel. The colony existed for six years, until one day all twelve members disappeared without a trace. It is widely believed that their disappearance is connected to the disastrous hurricane that passed through on September 29, 1915, but nothing truly supports this claim. What is known is their frequent participation in New Orleans nightlife, their love for hosting parties, and their elaborate contributions to the Mardi Gras parades as the Pirates of Panchartrin. Accounts of their lifestyle can be found in almost every gossip column. It can effectively be summed up as carefree and bohemian. In late June 1909, the name Astarte first appeared in the newspapers. Cortez said the name came to him as he was painting. 
There is never any claim to knowing about the ancient Phoenician fertility goddess with the same name before this time. His fellow colonist Heinrich Kassel did know, because he later produced sculptures that show clear references to ancient idols of the goddess. Oh, I didn't mean to click out of that, but I did. That was kind of long anyways. Well, I'm just hoping this doesn't turn and get attacked again. I like how we got flown back here by like those little flying spider monkeys. So it's obviously taking me exactly where it wants to take me. Okay. Hmm. Still wonder if I could get up up there, but I don't think I can. I don't think it'll let me at all. Okay, so hold on one second. I'm in the conservatory. Which like does me no damn good. I'm trying to get to the clerk's office. Oh, if I go down. Man, I don't know. Who knows? And I'm trying to be uh, frugal with my ammo because these guys are not giving me anything. Keep our secrets. Mrs. Thompson, I understand the last week has been busy. Under these circumstances, I find it important to remind you that Rosetto's concerns are not a public matter. Nor is it something that should upset you. Please continue your excellent work and don't spend a thought on the death of Perosi, or, more importantly, the suicide of Cassandra Beauregard. They should mean nothing to you or the staff. I rely on your loyalty and trust that your close kinship with the Tabois siblings will keep Tercetto's secrets hidden. Dr. Gray. Okay, can't get through there. Man, they, they have like stashed like new things to find in a lot of these areas. What is that? What it Yeah, I don't know what's happening right there, but that is creepy. Hmm. Uh oh. That's not good. Kitty is finally gone. And I don't think I can go back that way. No, I need like a special key. So. Find an alternate way to the stair hall. Okay, we've done that. So we need to just go over. Ah. That's right. It's a stair hall reception clerk's office. Oh, but it's blocked. Of course it is. Why would it? Oh my God, this scared the crap out of me. Why is this locked? Hmm. I need the key. I don't like that bear. Never have, never will. There's the 
perception. So it seems like there must be a spare key to Dr. Gray's office in here somewhere. I need the key. Open up the safe inside the clerk's office. <clears throat> yeah, we don't have puzzle. Yeah, we don't even have the information to solve the puzzle yet. <clears throat> if we did, the icon would be green. It's white, which means we got to go look around and find whatever info we need to solve the puzzle. <sighs> God, I hate these statues. Let's see. Sitting room. I'm going to go this way first. Oh. Detective Conby. Good to see you again. Solved your case yet? I'm trying. Hey, Grace, you okay? Oh, she is just peachy, Detective. Are you looking forward to the Feast of St. John, Grace? I can't wait. Kids, ain't they great? What exactly are you planning for tonight? Oh, not much. We eat, we drink, we pay tribute to the wishing tree in the conservatory. The usual. Then why all the excitement? That is just something about tonight. Something's different. I think we all feel it. Besides, we got ourselves some new words for the prayer thanks to your buddy Jeremy. She'll come and turn the world inside out, and things will begin again. That sounds strangely threatening. You should come. Oh, God damn it, Grace, stay put for once. That's good. Just have the super drunk dude <laughs> babysitting the little girl. Alright, so this still needs a puzzle piece. There's something missing. Like a puzzle piece. We're just gonna start over here and work our way around. Cause there's a bunch of items that were in like that weren't there before. Jack in the box. Look. We have five of 15 sets complete. Now, I don't think we can complete all these sets. I think, um, like I was saying earlier, I think it's like a situation like Leon and Claire where like in Resident Evil where some of these, you can only, um, you can only complete when you play as both characters. Now, I could be wrong. Yeah. Jack in the box. Been knowledge. All of them are knowledge except for secret objective. All the world's a stage. Secret objective. Dying with dignity. Unlock shotgun cabinet. Uh, unlocks a hidden memory in the attic. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. I, uh... Grace's drawings. Okay, so that's definitely a puzzle. Wait, what? Was this here before? First floor hall key. Nice, I will take it. To these. Wouldn't no want to get lost. Like, no kidding. Question is. Did he give that to us intentionally or not? Not sure if it was intentional, but hey. Cause 
Cassandra's last page. Jeremy knew that the only one who could help him now was the guest in room number three. The room seemed to have been empty for so long, but that wasn't allowed to be true. The story needed to be different. To include something from the outside, he would bring the guest back to room three and show them what was in that safe. Nine, one, three. But those were not the right numbers. That was the combination for the safe in the clerk's office. Oh, well, <laughs> thank you. Nine, one, three. That's nice. Nine, one, three. Slaughter Gulch. A movie manuscript called Slaughter Gulch. Death of the author. I hope I didn't miss those sunglasses or the glasses. I swear to God, I missed them in the Forbidden Mound. I saw them um, and they were all shiny and everything. I just it wasn't letting me it wasn't letting me pick them up. So I don't know if that was another glitch in the game or what. I know like earlier we had a few glitches where we just had to move past. Now this, there hasn't been anything in here except for a bunch of creepy audio. The hell? That is gross. I feel like if you weren't dirty, you would be after getting in that bathtub. All right. Clerk's office. Why we're here, should we look around one last time up here? Let's see, sitting room. Grace's room, Cassandra's room, BBC. We'll just look really quick. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah, I don't want to go that way. Oh, there is stuff here. Detective Combe, I'm terribly sorry that my niece has pulled you into this mess. Please, with all my blessings, take her away from this cursed place. I have destroyed that eater of worlds and locked it away in the attic and retreated to a place of hiding. Tell Emily I'm safe. Tell her all the lies you can think of to make her listen. Take her back to New Orleans. Sincerely, Jeremy. Oh. Huh. Well, that's, that's never good when you're a detective and trying to find somebody and the person you're, like, finding is, like, writing you messages like that. I wonder if the dead body's still in here. Man, there's stuff in like every room. Trust me. Brother, I need you to trust me. This is the most important moment in our family's history. I know you have doubts and that the terrible Mama Loa told you lies. I would never betray you. I promise. Lottie. Ooh. Ooh. What all do we got for... Sacrificial dagger. We can examine it. It's the only thing we've been able to examine. A dagger swathed in the grip of two sleek snakes found buried in the sunken temple along with the dark man's contract. Yeah, who do we got to kill? Who's getting stabbed? I don't like it. Okay. Can I unlock this? I don't understand. It wouldn't let me unlock it from the other side either. Which doesn't make any damn sense. Alright, let's go to the clerk's office. 
get in there like we're supposed to. I wonder what's in this safe. Cause this, uh oh. I can't leave. I got a job to do. Oh, I'm not trying to leave you, dumbass. Should we look in here really quick first? What? Oh yeah, I can go to the grand parlor and stuff. Um. Huh. Well, let's go through here first. Oh my god, that was creepy. Nine one three, right? I don't have right. a combination for this. Yeah, we Maybe do. Jeremy did. It's nine one three. Uh, one two three four six. It's nine. One. Three. It worked. Yeah, I wonder why he said we didn't have the combination. We totally got it. Uh, Dr. Gray's office key. Cool, cool. Okay. The empty room. The last guest in the empty room suffered from severe maladaption. I must write this down, because if I understand the condition sufficiently, it could make me deny this fact at a later date. And there is reason for me to think I may come to suffer the consequences from this dysfunction, as some who came in contact with the guest seemed to adopt a new worldview in which everything was predetermined but broken. Upon accepting this worldview, some memories became unmanageable and later rejected. I do not know what this means. I cannot even remember the fate of the guest. I think they were simply misplaced one day and forgotten. Uh, just like all documents pertaining to this guest, they have all been destroyed, or they never existed in the first place. Who wrote this? There has never been a guest in the empty room. The empty room? All right, so we got to go ch check out the empty room. So uh, the key to the office has been in there the whole time. So we can get into Dr. Gray's office. Treatment room. I want to go to the empty room first, though. Well, I mean, we're right here, damn it. Do I want to go to the empty room first? Ah. Ah, I'm gonna go do the other one because I don't know. Because our objective is to get into that one, right? Which makes me think this might be a little extra. So if it is, I want to go check out the empty room first. Getting the hell out of there. Damn it. So now the Dr. dark Gray's man. Office, all to myself. Let's see if we can figure this guy out. Stairwell key. Perfect. Okay. We'll have to try to go to the empty room later. Here we go. Clue. Jeremy's treatment. Dearest Dr. Manzetti, I find myself in a losing battle with my patient. As I've disclosed in my previous letter, his delusions have him completely captured. 
It's bad enough that he is torturing himself with paranoia, but his madness turns out to be quite persuasive to others, effectively laying the ground for mass delusion. I am writing to you in hope that you can give me some guidance. Beyond my ambition to avoid devastating surgery on my patient, I have grown worried about my own defenses. The words of my patient are deranged, yet they often resonate with something primitive within me. I have tried photographing his brain with x-rays. It was surprisingly difficult to get good results. Dark blotches on the plates kept obscuring all details. My patient looked at the bad plates and cried out in terror, telling me the dark areas was the shadow of the worm eating him from inside. I could not see anything out of the ordinary. I hope this is a sign that my mind is not as receptive to the madness as I had feared. After further inquiry, my patient described the shadows inside his mind as some kind of chthonic monstrosity that wants to undermine his sanctuary. This is clearly a reference to a place he calls Teroea, a sort of library or convent that works as a psychological haven. With this imaginary haven threatened by this Chthonian, he has now constructed another less pleasant hiding spot. Lately, he has been bringing up a metaphor of a steamboat that has run aground, that he feels like he needs to start the engines and reverse, but he is afraid that the hole in the hull would cause the whole ship to sink. I've been watching him turn this metaphor into reality for the last week. He knows it's made up, but he is doubling down, trying to make it a real memory. I feel certain that this is my chance to break through the barriers of his self-deceit. Hmm. We need to look for Jeremy's x-ray plates in the infirmary. Oh, here, hold on. McCaffrey's pirate treasure. Nice. This is where McCarthy has hidden my favorite young. It's very important. Coffee's pirate treasure. Okay. This is where McCarthy has hidden my favorite young. It's very important. Hmm. I have finished tidying up Miss Beauregard's belongings. I will leave it to you to contact her agent and have them collect her things. I found one of Grace's drawings she might want back, along with this key in her room, which I believe you've been looking for, Mrs. Thompson. Ah. Uh, okay, so now we have a couple things. One, oh man, we got several things Doctor. we can do now. Um. So... We have the stairwell key, which means we can go down in the stairwell of that whole last section, right? The other thing we can do... Why is it showing the clerk's office that there's a puzzle in there? I already solved the puzzle. I don't know. Uh, we can go into Grace's room. And, uh, well, I don't know if we can get that one yet. Is the attic not done? Are we not done with the attic? But I, I still want to go to the empty room. See the empty room? McAfee's room. Those We need to go search those. Those haven't even been searched yet. So, uh, take... Okay, break through the barriers of self-deceit. Uh, take a look through the empty room. And then look for the treasure in Grace's drawing. And then and then look for Jeremy's x-ray plates in the infirmary. Find Grace's missing drawing. What's this? The Flying Dutchman. Oh. When it makes you worse. 
What a terrible thing to recognize that your betterment was an illusion. That you are so infatuated by the virtue of struggling that despite all your hard work, you made no real efforts to ever become well. Or that the treatment becomes such an obsession that instead of letting your wounds heal over time, you tear at the flesh in the hope that it will heal better and faster. If only it would bleed in the way you wanted. Do we ever become well? What do you think, Dr. Gray? Okay. That's helpful. Oh no. It's not where I wanted to be. Oh jeez. That's not good. I'm on a sinking ship. I want to make sure that the um, safe is empty, considering it shows up on the map. Is that not solved yet? But I think it's just a glitch. Just a bug that needs worked out. I'm just waiting to get attacked out here. Alright, let's bite the bullet and go after... I just like turned around and ran from this dude. So McAfee's room, Ruth's room, the nympho, that ought to be interesting, and then the empty room. Which this is our only way. Neat. Maybe I've been selling that old barfly short. Looks like McCarthy has something hidden inside. Oh, I thought maybe I could use the key to... Moment of clarity. Sometimes. I think this place makes me worse. That Dossetto might be my grave. A coffin made of ostentatious architecture. A Taj Mahal for the drunken depressed. There's something about Dersetto. Something about Dr. Gray. Like we all pretend that we're here to get better. When in fact we are here to be forgotten. That's dark. Nothing? So, I don't know if it's a glitch in the game, but I have not picked up any health, ammo, or anything like that since... Well, before uh, we were at, uh, went into the temple. Yeah, since the temple, we haven't picked up any health, ammo, nothing. Everything's been empty. Oh, well, I'm waiting for this to flash into something different. Something terrible. It's the Nympho's room. Is that a camera pointed at her bed? Of course it is. Of course it is. nothing yeah there's something wrong with this that they keep i don't know why they don't give me any ammo oh my god there's my first ammo i've had in probably three or four videos uh maybe not that much but a long time several hours of gameplay okay what the hell Key to the empty room?
Pretty sure I have the key to the empty room. Stairwell key. Hmm. Grand parlor. Well, let's head over this way, I suppose. Well. I can't take this much more. This has to end. Oh no, he's losing his sanity. Well, don't worry, we're gonna die because we're not picking any ammo or health or anything up. What did I just pick up? Oh, a goat without horns. Oh yes, the old goat without horns. Damn it. Nothing. This is wild. <sighs> I like how nice all this stuff is. Here we go. And we're back. <laughs> Uh, pretty much the same place we were before. All right, guys, I've been playing this video for a little bit. I am going to go ahead and end this video here. Kind of ironic. We're back kind of where we started in the stairwell at the beginning of this video. Um, this is chapter four, so we got to be getting pretty close to the end. Thanks for watching today, guys. Your pal Al, love you, and I will see you in the next video.